Ronald was a better guard than Allen Iverson. Ronald was a better quarterback than Michael Vick, the greatest high school athlete of all time. We about to get into it. Hit that like and subscribe button. This is Behind the Jersey, episode three, Ronald Curry. Bow! What up, YouTube? It's your boy, Fan Goon. The Fan Dude Finesse, Bet MGM Flexer. Turn them noties on, subscribe to the channel. Let's lock in, my boys. Yes, YouTube. Two up, two down. VA, Virginia, the 757. A place that gave us Allen Iverson, Michael Vick, Missy Elliott, Pharrell. The list goes on. I'm bringing y'all 757 VA legend. Ronald Curry, the greatest high school athlete of all time. So without further ado, let's get to it. Bow! Now, Ronald Curry was born May 28, 1979 in Hampton, Virginia, a place where few make it out. His father was only 16 and his mother was 14 when they had Ronald. So as you can predict, Ronald grew up in a household that wasn't always stable. When Ronald was seven, his father was convicted of an armed robbery charge and another serious charge that got him sentenced to life in jail. Ronald was down bad. He had to live with his mom and his grandmother who was also raising 38 other grandchildren. So when Ronald was 12, his mother Deborah, she wanted to move, she wanted a better life. So she decided to pick up her things and pack it up and move to North Carolina. She wanted a better life, but Ronald wanted to stay in Hampton. So he begged his mom to stay and she let him stay and live with his grandmother. But Ronald's grandmother was loved in the community. She was known to be a woman that took care of all her loved ones. She raised Ronald to have respect for his elders and she made sure that Ronald would stay focused on school and sports. This type of upbringing would help Ronald avoid some of the same legal issues that his peers faced. Ronald was a good student in school and like most kids in the 757, he had a passion for playing basketball and football. From a young age, he knew he wanted to play in the NFL and the NBA. I'ma play a clip from Amai Hawkins, a football player from VA who played ball with Ronald. So let's tune into this clip courtesy of stories from the center of the universe. Shout out to y'all, so let's tune in and we'll be right back. Bow! So I go to the sideline, I move, I take a knee, and I just hear, oh, S word. And I go, <laughs> what? And they say, look up. And I looked up and the ball's like, Poof, like a missile. And I was like, damn, who kicked that? It was like, nobody kicked that. That dude just threw it. I said, what dude? I said, Ronald Curry, ain't you paying attention? I said, no, nah, I was getting some water. So we we back on the field. So I still haven't technically seen him yet. I just saw the ball. So I get we get on, we get on offense again, I end up scoring again. So this time I make a point to stand on the sideline. So he runs out. I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. That's somebody uncle? Because he's like 6'1. <laughs> wait a minute, how old are we all again? He's in the sixth grade. <laughs> like six feet, six one. I'm like, uncle. I'm like, yo, who uncle is that right there? He was like, yo, that's Ronald Kerr. I said. Oh, hell no. And then oh. he said, he was like, ready, down. And then his goal was where he's like, go, go. And then he got the ball, rolled out, and launched it about 60 yards. Like, poof. I was just like, wait a minute. Our quarterback just throw swing passes. I mean, we throw like quick out slants. We run an uh, run, old school run and shoot with popcorn, with little pop passes where you had two wings. You go into motion, the orbit motion, you go around, and they throw it to you like that. Well, he was throwing it, throwing it. And I was just like, yo, this joker is nice. So I go to meet him, and he got the like the lightest voice. Like, hey man, how you doing? I'm just like, you are the guy they talking about. And then he, you know, he I never, I yet, never, man. Yeah, exactly. But I'm just like, cause he was so tall. Like, you know, I'm a short guy. So I'm just looking at him like. He gonna be like, how you doing, brother? And I was like, hey man, how you doing? <laughs> but he was phenomenal. I played great. against him in basketball too. He played against, he played for a Pine Chapel Blue Devils. I played for the Aberdeen Lakers, and they kicked our tail twice. And he played center. He was LeBron. He played center, but he was playing point guard too. He wore number twenty three. He was the tallest kid on the court. He was like grazing the rim. He won't dunk it yet, but he was grazing the rim. And uh, then we played against play uh, as teammates on the AAU team and we won like a tournament in DC. And that's how we ended up becoming friends. Cause during that, that summer, 
we got to like really talk and stuff like that. But he was an urban legend when he was in sixth grade. So as you hear from the clip, Ronald was physically gifted from a young age. And by the time he was ready for high school, he knew he wanted to be a quarterback and a point guard at Hampton High School, the same high school NFL quarterback Tyrod Taylor went to. And down the road, there was Warwick High School, a school that recruited a young Michael Vick. Yes, Vick played high school sports around the same time as Ronald, but Ronald was considered a better player than Michael Vick. So from his freshman year, Ronald started fessing it up on a whole nother level, playing both basketball and football. People were comparing him to Allen Iverson, who also played the quarterback and point guard position. And like Iverson, Ronald was extremely athletic, but Ronald was able to avoid some of the issues that Iverson dealt with. Being a young black athlete in Virginia, Ronald was extremely focused and he wouldn't let anything stop him from helping his family get out the trenches. During his high school years, Ronald would go through several tragic events. The first one being at the age of 15, Ronald's cousin, Jamel Dennis, was savagely murdered after a summer league basketball game in Norfolk in an attempted robbery gone bad. And around that time, his grandmother was also suffering from health complications. So with the death of his cousin and his grandmother sick, Ronald used the pain he had in his heart to fess it up even more. He would begin living with his legal guardian, Lillian Crawford, a family friend nicknamed Big Mama, who picked up where Ronald's grandmother left off. She helped Ronald stay focused. Every day he locked in, working out, improving his skills in basketball and football. In four years at Hampton High, Ronald would finish with an impressive 51-2 record, including three straight state titles in football. In his junior year, he scored 76 touchdowns and finished high school with 185 touchdowns, you two. He also won National Player of the Year for football as a junior, but he still wasn't done. In basketball, he averaged 22 points as a junior and led his high school to a state title. The next year, he won McDonald's Basketball Player of the Year, winning MVP of the McDonald's Basketball All-American Game, a game that Ronald dominated and he was one assist shy of a triple-double, yes. Ronald was so turnt, he even won the McDonald's Slam Dunk Contest. I'ma play this clip real quick. We're gonna come right back and we're gonna lock in. Bow! Our next contestant is the local favorite, Ronald Curry, 6'2, 200 pound guard. Oh, yes, a little reverse power jam. Quarterback, unbelievable parade. High school, first team All American football, basketball, McDonald's All American. A great student as well, recipient of the McDonald's Player of the Year. There he is with the reverse jam. And they talked about his power, Dick. He shows it here. Very athletic, very explosive. Going out to North Carolina with that great class coming in. Jason Capel and Chris Lang and company. He'll probably hook up in that backcourt with Ed Coda. 57 out of a possible 60 points. Plays the home favorite, too. He's got the crowd behind him. The place is alive. A lot of mornings from this area as well. Hello, bring the house down. A great timing jam. You could just see that unbelievable high-rising explosiveness that he possesses. Big numbers across the board. Nobody's skimping on this one. Take a look right here. You got to time that perfectly to catch the bounce, the reverse jam, the spin. Knock it down, big fella. Take it home. Jam City! Got a perfect score of 60. And this is what the crowd wanted to see, their hometown hero. Here he goes again. What's allowed that one miss. That's his turnover. Doesn't count against him. They say he can really handle the rock. Explosive, like they said, in a rollout as a quarterback. Hey, maybe even another Charlie Ward. Heisman Trophy guy, Charlie Ward, unbelievable. Crowd chanting his name, they're into it. And they're not hollering for Vital here. Maybe it'll be like Ward. Ward played football, basketball at Florida State, now with the Knicks. He's going to try to do both at North Carolina. Virginia certainly heartbroken, had committed to Virginia originally, verbally. <laughs> There it is. They love him. Anything he can do, he can do no wrong. They love him here in Hampton. His coach goes on and on speaking about him. Walter Brower, the adjectives just flow in describing this young man. So I got 51 on this one, Dick. He likes those 
reverse dunks. We're talking about a guy at 6'2", 200 pounds, power player with great speed and quickness. Great agility, Dave. 168 out of a possible 180 points. So Ronald as you can see, Ronald was turned to a whole nother level. Everyone was saying he was a better quarterback than Michael Vick, a better basketball player than AI. All the recruiters were on his line, sending him off his left and right. At first, young Ronald committed to the University of Virginia, but their basketball program failed to hire a new coach before the season. So Ronald had to do what he felt was right and leave his hometown of Hampton. He had to lead the 757, yes, he decided to decommit from UVA and accept a full scholarship to play at the University of North Carolina for the Tar Heels. And Ronald would go to play for their basketball team and their football team. But things weren't easy for Ronald in college. From the gate, he faced hate. He faced hatred from the sports fans of Virginia. They felt Ronald was disloyal to the state of Virginia. And on his first homecoming trip to play UVA, Ronald was met with vicious boos from the fans. Ronald struggled his freshman year, starting off 0-3, but he was able to lead his team to a victory in the Las Vegas Bowl. Ronald will also play alongside UNC legend Julius Peppers, who was also a two-sport athlete for football and basketball. Julius was 6'7", which was unheard of at the time for a defensive end. His height advantage would help him on the basketball court, where Julius played power forward on the Tar Heels. Ronald and Julius would develop a decent chemistry on the court, leading their team to the NCAA tournament before losing to Penn State in the second round. After that, both men realized it was time to stop playing and put all their focus in football and get ready for the leap to the NFL. And during the 2000 season, both men would fess it up on the field. Peppers as a sophomore led the nation in sacks and Ronald broke a UNC single season record for all purpose yards. But unfortunately, the team finished six and five. The next year, they would come back for a vengeance with Ronald as the team captain and playing for a new head coach. Ronald and Julius would take their team to the Peach Bowl where they would go on to defeat Auburn. Peppers would eventually win the Lombardi Award at UNC. But while Julius had a breakout season in 2001, Ronald was forced to share his quarterback position with his backup at the time, which led to his numbers declining, even though he was more efficient. Ronald had used up all his college eligibility, so he decided to clear for the 2002 draft with Julius. Julius would be selected second overall by the Carolina Panthers and would eventually go on to have a Hall of Fame level NFL career playing with the Carolina Panthers, Chicago Bears, and the Green Bay Packers. Yes, but what happened to Ronald? Ronald would get selected by the Oakland Raiders in the seventh round. His first season as a quarterback for the Raiders was rocky, and Ronald and the Raiders would soon realize that Ronald's true gift would be his athleticism, which he would utilize at the wide receiver position. And over the next seven years, Ronald would go on to have a very solid NFL career. He even played alongside the legend Jerry Rice. In 2004, he won player of the week for his wild, leaping one-handed catch during a snowy game against the Denver Broncos. Curry was able to sign a five-year, $20 million contract, and eventually he was released by the Raiders in 2009. He would begin coaching football at the high school level from 2010 to 2012, before eventually landing a job as an offensive assistant for the San Francisco 49ers. Currently, he is the quarterback coach for the New Orleans Saints, working with guys like Jameis Winston and Taysom Hill. Ronald never reached the levels Michael Vick or Allen Iverson reached, but he still was able to make it out the hood, create a better way for his family, one of the greatest high school players ever, and maybe one of the best athletes to ever play in the state of Virginia. So that's it for today. I brought y'all another legendary story. So if y'all want more of these classic stories, keep liking, keep subscribing, retweeting, send a link to a friend. Let's fest up these views so I can drop more content. But once again, thanks for tuning in. Shout out the gang. Shout out Take Notes TV. Y'all know who it is. It's your boy, Fangoon.